Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the HP Chromebook 11 G5. This is an interesting Chromebook because of several factors. For one, it's currently the cheapest touchscreen model that you can find on Amazon. Sometimes a refurbished one goes for as low as $100. Having a touchscreen is actually an increasingly important feature for Chromebooks, and that's because more and more of these products will be supporting Google Play, the ability to run standard Android apps out of the box. And having a touchscreen converts this into what is essentially an Android tablet, the ability to play games and interact with media with more than just a keyboard and trackpad, and the HP Chromebook 11 G5 allows you to do just that. In this video, we'll be taking a quick look at both the design and performance, but first, this year's G5 is a stark departure from the previous Chromebook 11 from HP, which used much more colorful lines as well as a white polycarbonate build, along with a LED light strip on the front, a little bit reminiscent of the Pixel Chromebooks. So as a quick refresher, this is what the previous Chromebook Book 11 look like. HP has traded that toy-like appearance for a more professional look, but it's also more in line with any past HP laptops that have been released in the mid-end segment. Most of their current uh, laptops that you'll find for about $200 to $300 feature the same in exact design and color scheme, which is okay. It's fairly sleek, but it's also not too over the top. It's made out of a polycarbonate plastic material that's uh, actually surprisingly hefty, weighing in at roughly 2.5 pounds, and there's also a chrome accent for the HP logo embedded onto the front. On the edge of the Chromebook, you'll see a side slant, and you'll also find access to several ports, including a Kingsington lock, in addition to a full USB 3.0 port, along with a microphone and headphone port, which is a two-in-one. On the other side, you'll also find access to a secondary USB 3.0 port, a full-size HDMI port, as well as a micro SD card slot for expanding the built-in memory. On the back, you also find access to the rubber feet that prevents the unit from sliding around on a surface or a desk, in addition to two speakers, which actually pack surprising volume for such a small body, especially when put onto a surface after it being amplified onto the flat tabletop, it actually produces, again, more sound than you'd expect from such a small, lightweight Ultrabook. Flipping things open, we have access to an 11.6 inch display, which is IPS, uh, which is actually kind of rare for Chromebooks, uh, especially in this particular price category of around $150 and below. The competing Chromebooks in the same category will often just be traditional LCD or LED based without the IPS technology, and that means the viewing angles are often not as strong as on the G5. Furthermore, the Corning Gorilla Glass 3 as well as the lam laminated panel means that uh, you also get a very responsive touchscreen experience. In fact, it's quite lucid and precise. One downside, however, is that the hinge only opens so far, so you can't rotate it 360 degrees like on many Lenovo's Yoga Book products, uh, and as a result, uh, you also can't lie it completely flat. So the hinge, as far as the angle is concerned, is comfortable when it comes to typing and viewing content on a lap or onto a surface, but uh, if you want to hold it like a true tablet, that's uh, one area where the G5 falls a little bit short. Here's the Asus Chromebook C200, which is another very popular model, and Asus does make pretty good uh, Chromebooks as well, but it falls short in several different ways. For one, it's a slightly older and aging model that doesn't have a touchscreen, so there's no access to Google Play or Android apps right out of the box. The screen is also not IPS, so viewing angles aren't as good, it's also not a touchscreen which is definitely not the same demographic that this is hitting, 4 gigs of RAM is more than sufficient for most processing tasks. It also features a dual-core Intel Celeron processor that I also found to be sufficient when it came to multitasking as well as going through several tabs, and we'll dive into a closer look at that when going through the OS experience. But you can see how uh, both of these Chromebooks offer the same 11.6-inch display, and they have, for the most part, very similar overall designs. Thickness is also about the same, but uh, HP goes for an all-plastic build, whereas Asus has a more of a metallic surface on the front. Um, it's also slightly longer, although it's also a little bit less uh, wide from the side. Alright, so opening up the G5, we also have access to a pretty comfortable island style or chiclet style layout for the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, the keys, however, are not quite as good as on the Asus C200, which had a more depth of travel and a more consistent and confident click. On these, the keys wobble a little bit more, it's a bit more shallow, and it takes a little bit more force to get used to uh, the particular layout. However, it's still a pretty comfortable keyboard to type on, considering that it's a very small overall size um, as an ultra book. We have very standard function keys on the top 
top row for accessing some of the uh, page controls, full screen controls, as well as the print screen controls. This changes the brightness of the display, this changes the volume, and this will lock your computer. Down below here, we also have the trackpad, which is also fairly generous in terms of size for a small body. It offers pinch and zoom multi-touch gestures and also clicks down all the way across the entire trackpad and feels pretty consistent. Some reviewers have said that it's a little bit stiff for their liking, but in my opinion, as long as you press towards the bottom of the uh, trackpad, it, it actually feels rather comfortable and smooth. So overall, although the design of the Chromebook G5 isn't earth shattering, it's fairly rugged, it's durable, it looks nice as far as a budget computer is concerned, and again, it makes for a nice overall companion for students as well as those needing a secondary device uh, without having too much legacy or full desktop-based apps installed. Alright, so launching into the software experience next, there's not too many surprises on board. Now, the idea of Chromebooks, if you haven't heard of them before, is basically a replacement for a netbook. But instead of running on something like Windows or Linux, it runs on uh, Google's Chrome OS, which in the past only gave you basically a browser. So everything that you did needed to be connected to either Wi-Fi or 3G. If you don't have internet connectivity, there's not a lot that you can do, although there was a very primitive file manager that allowed you to view back content on a memory card or a thumb drive, such as files, uh, as well as music and movies. But that was pretty much it. However, Chromebooks have gotten increasingly popular over the past few years, thanks in large part to the budget price, the very long battery life, like this one, which gets you roughly 10 hours on a single charge. Furthermore, with the inclusion of touchscreens as well as access to the Play Store, the fact that you can now install basically many of the same apps and programs that you can find on your smartphone, which are also getting more and more powerful through the years, now makes Chromebooks actually a serious contender to a low-cost laptop, especially if you aren't doing too much things like specialty coding or running Photoshop anyways on your computer. All you need is web browsing, watching videos online, as well as doing Google Docs, PowerPoints, then this is actually a very powerful solution. So here's the interface. It's very simple. Uh, we have just a taskbar on the bottom that I can tap on to take a quick look at my login status, my keyboard. It also supports various languages, my Wi-Fi information, my sound settings. And on the edge here, I also have a row of commonly used programs as well as those that are currently open in the background. I can also use the touchscreen on the G5 to simply swipe up from the bottom bezel to have access to this bar that gives me universal search that goes through all of my individual apps. So for instance, I can search for something like camera and open up this camera app, or I can open up a previous web searches and links, and uh, that will take me there. I can also swipe through for the full list of applications installed on this particular Chromebook. And you can see that despite running on an Intel Celeron processor, which is still rather low end, it's not quite as fast as an Intel Core M or i series by any stretch, on a Chromebook, which is extremely lightweight and optimized, basically everything in terms of the processing power is built and geared towards this light OS with the web browser in mind, the overall responsiveness is still very high. What's good is that you have access to a full desktop class Chrome browser that includes everything that you get from a version of Chrome installed on a Windows or Mac computer. It's very responsive. All the gestures like pinch and zoom work flawlessly without any problems, and it also is insanely fast. Wi-Fi reception is also very strong on the Chromebook G5, and we consistently receive about four uh, to five bars of reception, even when the router was uh, kind of far away. So there's no problems at all when it comes to loading back even complex pages like the New York Times, which are filled with videos and apps and you can just tell how fast this thing is. So much faster than you know Chromebooks of yesteryear when it comes to loading time as well as the overall responsiveness. So if we try playing back, let's say, a full video, we can even full screen this, and uh, this is a good test of the speaker quality as well. After OS reviews, you're watching our unboxing and first impressions look at the Elephone P8 3D. Like the name suggests, this is a smartphone that has a glasses and we can also skip or scrub back ahead, past and it places back every... very quickly. And again, all the controls, as far as the touchscreen is concerned, are really responsive as well. Almost no lag at all, uh, so that's the impressive thing. Of course, this is a fanless computer, so there's no running fans in the background. That's how it achieves a really slim portfolio, and as a result, again, the battery life is excellent. It also doesn't really get hot or overheat either. Even after using it continuously for four to five hours on a single go, it still remains quite good. Standby time is also excellent, just like with most Chromebooks. You can close the lid. It will shut off automatically. When you open it up, it just uh, resumes where it le left off on, and uh, the battery is also saved to a large extent. After coming back to it after almost, let's say, a week later, 
you'll still find only a drop of, let's say, uh, single digit percentages, which is excellent. All right, so going into some of the more interesting elements of the G5, which is support for Google Play out of the box. Again, it's one of the least expensive Chromebooks that offers this capability, and it's one of the reasons why Chromebooks seems to be the future uh, of tablets, and Android tablets doesn't seem to have a very bright future, is really because of this reason alone. We have access to essentially all of the standard uh, games as well as productivity tools that you would want to download from the Play Store, many of them free, uh, and all of them actually work quite well. There are even a few apps which have been specially optimized and recommended for Chromebooks to be used, including full versions of Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote if you don't want to use the Google Drive or Google Doc alternatives. There's also Adobe Photoshop Sketch, and again, many of these mobile versions of apps are getting more and more powerful since uh, processors are getting more and more powerful as well on mobile devices. Let's go through a few of these examples, starting with Painter, which again is uh, kind of a drawing tool. And uh, just like on Android, the experience is quite similar. It full screens after a few seconds. We also have a few ads here and there to telling us how to interact and use this Chromebook. And uh, let's skip ahead and start drawing. So let's tap on the brush. And from here, we can just say hello. And you can see that uh, it actually works very well. And a demo of the gaming experience, which also works quite well. So this is a tower defense game. and. Uh, Hopefully it will proceed. Again, the impressive thing is that it's actually keeping up pretty well in terms of frame rates. And even if I zoom in and zoom out in this 3D title with lots of uh, complex animations, it still seems to be working actually really well. And finally, this is what the camera uh, app looks like. So you can see it's a pretty simple interface, very standard as far as Chromebooks are concerned. The good thing is that the, the webcam actually does a decent job even under low, lower light environments. It's not the clearest or most crisp as far as image is concerned, but it captures video at 720p HD resolution. Also includes an LED to tell you uh, when it's in, in recording mode, and it also has a microphone as well, so you can use it for video chatting situations. So that's the HP Chromebook 11 G5. For under $150, I like this Chromebook a lot, especially because the screen is a huge improvement over many of its competitors at the same price, especially just a few years ago when there were basically no IPS displays on any Chromebook, uh, even ones more expensive than this one. But uh, this one really has excellent viewing angles. Even though it's 720p, I found it to be sufficient for most tasks, and uh, it also conserves on the battery, which is also very good, lasting you around 10 hours on a single charge. The overall UI experience is responsive, probably thanks to the fact that it has 4 gigs of RAM, which is currently, again, one of the higher configurations for a standard Chromebook, and the fact that uh, it runs Google Play Store apps and Android apps right out of the box is an excellent bonus. Speaker quality is also very good and I'm a fan of the overall quality of the design as well as the uh, pretty clean, minimalistic look um, as well as the fact that, uh, again, it's very attractively priced. So if you're on a budget, if you're trying to get a Chromebook for the first time to try out uh, you know, what it is, how it performs, or if you're trying to upgrade from, let's say, another netbook or a lower-end computer and you've decided that you really don't need a full-blown Windows operating system just because for most folks, 90% of the time you'll be spending it in the browser anyways, or if you want to replace a tablet that's aging, then this is actually an excellent option to consider. So thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. That's been our hands-on review of the HP Chromebook 11 G5. Uh, again, an affordable Chromebook that uh, doesn't break the bank, but offers all the latest features that the platform has to offer. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews.